Today's Namaste Yoga continues our Nourishing Your Energy series to clear your mind. Hello and welcome to episode number 264 of Namaste Yoga. I'm Dr. Melissa West. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes. I am wearing a red bamboo tank with a dancing shiv on it and long black leggings. And thank you to Dusky Leaf for our props today. Today you are going to need blocks and a chair. And we're going to have a testimonial to start today. Today's testimonial comes from Charbet via email. And she said, I would like to thank you for this valuable video. Yoga for Anxiety, which you can get on my shop or on the membership site. When I watched it for the first time, I thought it wouldn't work since the exercises were very simple. But when I started exercising, I felt myself full of energy, excited, happy, and at the same time, very calm. I practice yoga at home and indoors since I'm working and living in Saudi Arabia. But when I go to my country, Lebanon, I will practice at the mountains or at the beach so that I can get more benefit. Thank you again, and I'm glad to know you. I did yoga exercises before, but I feel very suitable with your style and your way of practicing. Thank you so much, Abe, for your testimonial, and thank you all of you who leave your comments and insights and awarenesses about your practices. I love hearing about you and hearing your comments, and when you leave them on YouTube or Facebook or on iTunes and on the membership site, it's really great to hear about your practice. Okay, let's get started right away. Today we're going to start in cat pose, Marjariasana. So come on to all fours and you're going to take your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips and I want to thank all the beginners and people who responded to my post about um, what their biggest obstacle to learning yoga was and wrist was a big one so let's take care of your wrists here. One thing you can do if your wrists bother you in this pose is come on to your fist and you're going to exhale and round up through your back and then inhale and arch through your back. So just begin by warming up your spine. Breathe out and round and then breathe in and arch. And then from here, we're going to come into Pigeon Pose, Ik Pad Raj Kripatasan. And the way you come into Pigeon, you're going to take your arms forward, draw your right knee forward to your right wrist, reach your left leg back and long, and then fold forward over your bent right knee. And then this is generally a stretch for your hip, your right hip and into your right thigh. But some days I'll feel this stretch into my inner thigh as well. Just depends on what's tight. And if this pose isn't working for you, 
then you have the option of coming onto your back and you can do the figure four stretch instead. So you can lie on your back, cross your right leg over the top of your left thigh, draw your left thigh into you. So that's a good option as well. Okay, and with the forward folding pigeon, if you have a belly that's in the way, you can lift up and just lift and pull the flesh out of the way before you fold forward as well. And then slowly release your posture from this side of your body and we'll come and take this posture on the other side of your body. So you're gonna come up onto all fours again. And then from here, you're going to slide your left knee forward to your left wrist, reach your right leg back and long. And then again, you're going to fold forward. And if, if your um, body constricts your movement in any way, then you just move the flesh out of the way that's constricting that movement in any way before you fold forward. And if this movement doesn't work for you in any way, then you can always come onto your back. If it hurts your knees, a lot of people get pressure in their knees in that pose. Then you lie on your back, you cross your left leg over your right knee. You draw your right knee in towards your chest. If you can't reach here, you can use a strap around the back of your, your right leg to draw your leg into your chest. And again, if any part of your body is getting in the way, you just lift and pull it out of the way. So find a way out of the posture. And then you're going to get your blocks and come back onto all fours. You're gonna take the blocks underneath your hands and depending on how tight your hamstrings are, you'll change the position of your blocks. So if they're really tight, make your blocks really high. And let's start with your left leg in the center of your blocks. And the tighter hamstrings are, the closer you'll bring the distance between your knee and your left heel. And then curl your right toes under. And I'm just gonna back up a bit there. And then breathe in. And breathe out, you're going to straighten out through both your legs until you feel sensation in the back of your front leg so that you're getting a stretch down the whole front back of your front leg. 
Parjvottanasana. So here, if your wrists bother you, just make sure your fingers are hanging over the front of the blocks so that your wrists aren't in a flex position, but that they're straight there. That will help with your wrists. And then bend both of your knees and switch so that your right foot is between the blocks. And from here, you're going to curl your back left toes under. Breathe in. Breathe out. Straighten out through both legs until you feel sensation in your back of your front right leg. And then bend both your legs and we're going to come back down to seated here so you can put your blocks off to the side and you can choose today if you're comfortable seated, sitting on a meditation cushion or a folded blanket or a chair choose what's best for you today actually why don't we show sitting on a chair today because we never show that yeah So if you sit in a chair, we watched um, the special Downton Abbey with the uh, manners last night and the scene that st stood out to me or a part of it that stood out to me last night was that they, in those days, they never let their backs touch the back of the chair, which is actually a, a better way of sitting really because then you maintain the natural curves of your spine. But one of the ways, and this is not very, Ahinsa. One of the ways that they did that was um, the nannies would teach the children to do that by putting a knife on the back of the chair with a blade on the towards the back. So I wouldn't advise that. But sitting on the edge of your chair with your sit bones connected to the to the base of the chair, and then just check in and see if you lean forward. If you lean back a bit, just notice. Notice how your spine rounds and curves and then you don't want to do that. You lose the integrity of your spine and you just lose the natural curves of your spine. But if you sit up, then you gain the natural curves of your spine. Your whole spine comes into its natural curve with a round in here, around back with your thoracic spine and around in with your cervical spine. So that's what you want. And we're going to do the Makar Mudra again to nourish your energy today. So the way that that works is you place your thumb and your ring finger together on your left hand. And then on your right hand, you take the web of your pointer finger and your thumb and you place it between your ring finger and your baby finger on your left hand. And the palm of your right hand rests on the back of your left hand. And this comes to the level of your belly and then you focus on your breathing in your belly close your eyes bring your attention down into your belly 
and imagine there a lake. Each time you breathe out, imagine sending that breath out deep into your lower belly. And in your lower belly, imagine there a lake. With each breath out, that lake gets wider and deeper. So this is one way to clear our mind. So as my teacher says often that there's space away from thought when we bring our attention down into our belly. So that's one way to clear your mind. And this part of your practice is just as valuable as the physical part of moving your body. So that's why we put it right in the middle of your class. So as you focus on nourishing your energy by breathing into your belly and allowing your energy reserves to grow deeper and wider within yourself, creating space away from thought, clearing your mind, I will share the teachings for today. We tend to rely on our minds to interpret our experience of the world. Yet our thinking mind interprets the world through cultural constructs that are separate from our true, direct, spontaneous experience of life. We hold thought with great value and yet they are simple interpretations of a collection of cultural conditions that we carry around in our brain. Thinking is separate from our lived experience. Thinking is based on manufactured ideas about the world around us. Our thinking may or may not have anything to do with our actual present, real moment experience of the world. We tend to believe our thinking as the truth. In reality, our thinking is a judgment of what is right or wrong. Pre-digested interpretations based on past experiences, preconceptions, and interpretations. This kind of thinking keeps us from connecting with our life-giving energy. When we clear our mind from value statements, judgment, artificial meaning, interpretations, and formulas, we are able to have a direct experience of our reality. Our judgments overwhelm and separate us from our life energy. Cultural conditioning can start to dominate the content of our energy until we no longer feel the balancing, restorative quality of our original life force energy. Meditation and meditative practices like yoga will allow us to reprogram our life energy to a pure signal that will allow us to nourish our energy and the energy of all the cells in our body and our mind. So reflect on how these teachings relate to you and your life. What is it that you would like to receive from your practice today? Why are you here? Why are you practicing yoga today? And begin to form an intention for what it is you would like to create, sustain, release, or rebirth in your life right now. And then once you form that intention, You can begin to release the mudra from your hands and begin to wiggle and stretch out.
and start to make your way up to standing. And from standing, we're going to do a visualization and an exercise to clear your energy, to clear your mind and clear your energy. So we're going to start with your hands on your lower belly, at your Dantian. And you're going to imagine they are a ball of energy like you did last week. So as you inhale, allow your hands to move away from your belly. Let your knees be soft. And as you exhale, feel the ball of energy contract and your hands move back towards your belly. So inhale, ball of energy expands, your hands move away, exhale, ball of energy contracts, your hands move back. And now start to let this ball of energy get even bigger. Let your hands float up a little bit more. And then let it start to get even bigger so that this ball of energy starts to completely surround your entire being. It's almost like blowing up an energetic balloon around you. Maybe if you can't see it, you can sense it underneath your hands. Keep going until it goes all the way up over your head. And both your arms are going to come right over your head. So I have one arm that won't go over my head right now. So just watch my right arm, which will be on your left if you're watching, if you have your eyes open. And then once you're completely surrounded by that energy, you're just going to take your hands, both hands, over your head. And you're going to just sweep down the back of your hand with both hands. And clear all the energy around the back of your head. So like you're sweeping away any debris you've picked up during the day.
And then you're gonna bring your hands around to the front of your collarbones, which are really just right underneath your tops of your shoulders there. And then you're gonna sweep down the front of your torso, clearing any energy at the front of your body. Keep breathing. And then bring your hands to rest at the front of your lower belly again and breathe in and out. Feeling that ball of energy expanding and contracting at your lower belly. And then you can just slowly feel into your elbows, let your elbows be heavy, and then spread your fingers and relax your hands down. Take a deep breath in, let it fall out of your mouth and just check in. And notice if you feel like your mind is clearer now. Okay, so from here, we're going to do another uh, yoga pose to clear your mind. And this is a balancing pose. So balancing poses, I believe, really clear your mind because they ask you to focus. And when you have to focus on balancing, I don't believe you can be thinking about other things. So I'm gonna give you lots of options in this balancing pose. I've got a chair here so that you can use your chair for balance if you need to. Uh, we're going to do Virabhadrasan 3, Warrior 3 pose, with the option to do it with uh, eagle's arms. So with eagle's arms, you're going to take your left arm up. Most people's elbows will be dropping straight down. And then you'll hook your right arm underneath and bring your palms together. So uh, it looks like that more. With If that doesn't work in your body, you can bring your palms together or even backs of your palms together. So do what works best for you in your body today. Or you might drop the hands all together and use a chair for balance if balance is a challenge for you. So you're going to stand on your left foot and you're going to hinge over your left hip, keeping your body in a straight line like it's a teeter-totter and bring your torso and your head and your right leg parallel to the ground. So you can use that chair for balance. And one thing you can do to work on your balance is start with all your hands and fingers on the chair and then work up to take one finger off, take your baby finger off, take your fourth finger off, Take your third finger off to, and then just go down to one finger so that you're starting to challenge yourself. Okay, so that you're eliminating the points of balance. And then the option is here to come have eagle's arms in this pose as well. So lots of options in this pose for clearing your mind and creating that focus. And then find a way out of this pose and we're going to do this on the other side as well. So this time you'll stand on your right foot and the option is there to hold on to the chair for balance. You're going to tip forward over your right leg so that your left leg, your torso and your head are parallel to the ground. And then the option is to do the eagle's arms. So your right arm would come up. You'd hook your left arm underneath it. Bring your palms together. And then remember, lots of options in the eagle's arms. You can just do elbows and palms together or backs of the hands together. 
So do what works best for you in your body today. And then find a way out of this pose and you're going to take your chair and we're going to use it for our inversion today. Another way to clear your mind is to take some time to relax. So this inversion is very relaxing. It's a form of constructive rest. I'm going to get a blanket to put on here so that it protects the backs of your knees. This is a nice variation for legs up the wall. If you have any back problems and you can't do straight legs for any length of time. So you put your hips right up against the base of the chair. And then you bring your legs around so that your lower legs are on the top of the chair. So the other reason why I chose this pose because it's really incredibly restorative. So that's really good for our brains. Our nervous system tends to be incredibly overloaded in our culture, which is aggravating for our brains. The other reason why I chose this is as a great alternative to legs up the wall for people with back problems, as I mentioned. So if you have herniated discs, slip discs, degenerative disc disease, then having your legs in a straight position up the wall is aggravating for your low back. So this is a really nice alternative for that if you find legs up the wall bothers your back. So we're going to stay here for a couple of minutes, allow our energy to be nourished and restored. Again, create space away from thought. Clear your mind by focusing on your breath in your belly.
And from here, we're going to go ahead and release this posture. So you'll come, bend your knees, roll to your side. And make your way up onto all fours. You can take your chair and put it off to the side now. Okay, so from here, we're going to do some lunge pose. And the reason why I said keep your blanket is because you can use it for underneath your knees. Just a little extra padding underneath your knees. A very good idea. And you're going to walk your left leg forward to begin. Step forward. And then you're going to come upright. And to keep that focus and clearing your mind, we're going to use eagle's arms here and bring your right arm up, hook your left arm underneath it. So lots of options here. You can bring both elbows together, your palms together, or just the backs of your hands together. So whatever works best for you in your body today. And if you can, do a little lift of your heart and chest up towards the ceiling so you get a little back bend here. Then we're gonna come into a twist from here. So two options here, you can take your right hand to the outside of your left knee, or if you want to deepen the twist, you can take your right elbow to the outside of your left knee and bring your palms together. And if you have any flesh or um, any part of your belly is getting in the way, you're just going to lift and pull it out of the way here. And then you can come back to the center and we'll switch sides. So from here, you'll step your right leg forward and lean forward until you feel sensation at the front of your left hip. Sink into the front of your right foot and then bring your left arm up. Your elbow will drop straight down here. And you're gonna bring your right arm under your left elbow your palms will come together, so your, your right hand will come to your under, through and here to your right palm, to your left palm. So if that doesn't work in your body, you can either bring the backs of your hands together or just your elbows together and your palms together. So do what works best in your body today. And then do a little bit of lift through your chest and your Lift up through your chest and do a little back bend here too. Then you're going to come forward. We'll take this into a twist. So two options here. Take your left hand to the outside of your right knee. And then the other option is to take your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Bring your palms together. And if your belly is in the way, then you just lift and pull your flesh out of the way.
and then come back to the center. And we're going to finish with a breath practice today. So you can come back to sitting on your chair or you can sit cross-legged. If you choose to sit cross-legged, then you can elevate your hips so that it's higher than your knees. It's more comfortable for your body. We're going to do alternate nostril breathing here to clear your mind. So take your left hand, bring your thumb and your index finger together and extend your other fingers, rest that on your left knee. And then bring your right hand, extend your first two fingers, rest that at the center of your forehead. Close your right nostril, breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril, breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. Then keep going with your own breath rhythm. Then the next time you breathe out through your left nostril, lower your right hand down. And sense the quality of your mind now. Then you can either finish your practice seated here or you can go ahead and lie down on your back for Shavasana. So 
So this is your time to receive and integrate your practice to really settle in that clear mind. So today I've chosen the poem Self-Observation Without Judgment by Donna Falds. And I choose a poem that I feel resonates with our theme for the class. And if it resonates with you, then great. And if not, then you can just let it go. Release the harsh and pointed inner voice. It's just a throwback to the past and holds no truth about this moment. Let go of self-judgment, the old learned ways of beating yourself up for each imagined inadequacy. Allow the dialogue within the mind to grow friendlier and quiet. Shift out of inner criticism and life suddenly looks different. I can say this only because I make the choice a hundred times a day to release the voice that refuses to acknowledge the real me. What's needed here isn't more prodding toward perfection but intimacy, seeing clearly, and embracing what I see. Love, not judgment, sows the seeds of tranquility and change. Reflect back on today's practice of clear mind. And what stands out to you? What seems most important? What's one small thing you're going to take with you off your mat and into your life? Gradually allow your breath to deepen. Begin to wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees and roll to your right side. Take a pause there. And then slowly make your way up to seated. So we'll finish by chanting Loka Samastha Sukhi No Bhavantu, which means may all beings be happy and free and may the thoughts, words and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. And we do this with a series of moving mudras that draws the benefits of our practice in towards ourself and then offers them out into the world. So start with your left palm up and your right palm down. Loka samastha sukhino bhavantu Loka samastha sukhino bhavantu Loka samastha sukhino bhavantu. Loka samastha sukhino bhavantu. I think I did that backwards today. <laughs> I might have changed it up a bit. <laughs> Something wasn't quite right there. <laughs> I will look that over next week <laughs> before I redo it. <laughs> so, 
I'm sure it worked anyway. <laughs> so if you like today's show, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you know somebody else who might benefit from this practice of clearing your mind, please share this practice with uh, your friends, your family, people that you work with. That helps us a lot. And um, if you found that this practice benefited you and you want to know other ways how to clear your mind, then we'd love to have you as a member of our membership site. You can subscribe to our membership site right here below. We have lots of value added content on our membership site to help you clear your mind. We have a beginner's series for meditation, a how to meditate series, right from the very basics of how to meditate. Um, on our membership site, it's a five-part series, and then we also have a meditation group on our um, membership site that's run by one of the graduates of my Mentor with Melissa um, program, and each week she puts out a reflection, and it's a very um, lively group, and we support each other in our meditation practice each week, because it can be kind of a solitary practice, but uh, not in our meditation group at all. And I th think that's all. We'd love to have you as a me member of our community where we have lots of value-added content, a vibrant community of people from all around the world. And it's a way to deepen your practice and have a community and myself support you in your personal practice. So I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May you have the strength of our mountains. May you be as rooted as the trees in our forest. And may your joy be as deep as our oceans. Om Shanti Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.